Hello, hello, hello. It is me, it is me, your True Hill Phenom, SP3. Yes, we are back. Another stay-at-home social distancing video for you great people. And this time, I am with the host, with the most, with the most drinks, with the most shots, with the most comedy, with the most praise for his Viper God. He is the one, the only, the one extraordinary not extraordinary man he is the one the only drunk guy jj here with me today what is going on drunk guy uh, it's going good you know i'm going through a very depressing time with wrestlemania week not being you know going on so i've been drinking a, a much today ironically you know that's me that's what i do so uh, you know you gotta you gotta live this in and give me this is the lifestyle so we're going to continue to drink this truly. We're going to pop some Ciroc. We might pop open the bubbly, depending on how pissed off I get counting down this shitty shows. So, so yes, this who knows? is who knows? our... We're not going to do a top five, because I told Drunk Guy I am not a heavy drinker like this gentleman. But we are <laughs> going to do a special drunken list of the top five worst WrestleManias in history. So we might take several drop shots for certain WrestleManias, or we might take one big shot for the misery that we took in researching these shows and confirming that these are the worst, the five worst WrestleManias in history. So drunk guy JJ, or I might just go on a rant and then get upset about something and then just start drinking some more. Who knows? Like I said, I'm here for a good time, not a long time. So. That is his catchphrase. That is his catchphrase. So <laughs> you see, I'm wearing the same shirt I wore on True Hill Heat 67. I am recording just after True Hill Heat. So that's another reason why I had to make it the top five because I've already started drinking. Hard looking, hard with command. Hard Drunk, command right here. And I had to change the set. I'm not in front of my regular backdrop, my True Hill Heat backdrop. I am recording from a different set. So Drunk Guy JJ's got a Ciroc Black uh, Raspberry. He's got his Thule. I've got. I'm feeling very Dominican today. I got my uh, Brugal, Brugal, Brugal on deck. Brugal, Brugal, Brugal. And I got my uh, little little camera camera lens cup right here, a special edition right here for all you like great. Watch the heights oh. right now. So good though. Exactly. And watch heights. So, exactly. So exactly. Old ball. Got a good weed. You feel me? <laughs> So we are going to count down the five worst WrestleManias. WrestleMania is the biggest event in professional wrestling every year. But sometimes WWE hits a dud with this WrestleManias. I believe that me and Drunk Dad might have to redo our top five list after an empty arena WrestleMania that we're going to see this year. Jesus but don't remind me. But you know, you know, you know, the drunk guy was supposed to be in Tampa Bay right now. He's a little oh. about it. So we're going to we're going to try to break kid right now. We're going to try to make him forget all of that, though. We're going to try to make him forget all of that as we go through the top five worst records WrestleManias in history. So starting off with number five, we're going to start off with WrestleMania. 32. WrestleMania 32 took place in 2016. It took page from the AT&T Stadium in Dallas, Texas. Uh, Drunk Guy, were you there live for this WrestleMania? <laughs> Thank God, but no. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't there live. It's, it's, it's quite the surprise that he wasn't there live for this WrestleMania. So I don't the think the floor seat gimmick started yet. No, no, floor seat gimmick started. But I don't think I, I I started going batshit crazy at the time yet. But thank God I didn't, because that definitely was the plan to do to go to Mania 32. But I decided against it. I think because I ended up buying some stupid shit that kind of prevented it. But yeah, thank God I didn't go. The Viper God wasn't on the show; he was injured. So you know, yeah, once the Viper God is on the reason. show, it doesn't even matter. Um, yeah, it was a lot of injuries at that time. Anyway, with the show, so they tried to make the best of it. I mean, they could have did better, but you know, well they before we. They, before we fully explain the negative of uh, the show, I'll let you go into that part so you have a reason to drink. But I will explain <laughs> the positives with this show. The show started off very, very well with the uh, one of the best openers the in WrestleMania history with the uh, Intercontinental title uh, ladder match with Zack Ryder getting a surprise victory. We also had one of his other favorites besides the Viper God, one of uh, Drunk Guy JJ's personal favorites, the Boss, 
Sasha Banks with one of her greatest entrances in history with Snoop Dogg uh, wrapping her down to the ring as she went up it's against him. Boss, but Charlotte knew that the big boss dog yeah had to be that. That's he my knows, family, and we know every lyric. Bad down every to lyric. the new champ for WWE. Oh, bars, bars. That was a big question. As they determined the first ever WWE Women's Championship, uh, as she versed Charlotte Flair, as well as Becky Lynch, with Charlotte Flair getting the victory. That is all the good from WrestleMania 32 and Shane McMahon's big jump off the Hell in a Cell. Those are the three highlights from WrestleMania 32. Drunk Guy's already drinking because he's reminded of all the bad. What is the bad that sticks out in your mind from WrestleMania 32? Sasha lost. <laughs> you you build her up. You mind you, you get the mind you get the fucking diet. Mind you, remember that whole week they did that diary shit for her. For yeah. one, build it up, made her come to the stadium, see her big billboard. She she's the only one that gets somebody wrapping her interest to the ring. Everybody thought she was winning. She got the tribute gear for Eddie in Texas of all places. She went to visit his mural. They followed her literally up to the day of the show. And you know who they put the fucking title on? Charlotte fucking Flair. Who walked Charlotte in already the champ. Champ. So what's the point? You know, this is the, this is the, this is the shit. You know, I'm a fan of us. I love that. It is, it is, it is. <sighs> and mind you, it was a shit finish. Well, I guess you could say it was, it was a shit finish to me. It's for your old ass holding her leg. This motherfucker ain't got no strength anymore. How is he holding her leg for her to get back in the ring and bring up the power? I need another shot. Fuck this. You know? They saved her next title win for what? Uh, didn't she win it on a Raw like three months later? The yeah, fuck is that I, think, I think she won, a bigger on, moment. she won on the first Raw after the draft in uh, 2016. So, bottoms up for WrestleMania 32. Uh, Roman Triple H sucked, as we all know. Um, the Hell in a Cell match, besides the big change. It was trash. trash. Fucking was 32 trash. minutes of trash. The only thing you yeah, remember... Is a is a leap the hell in a cell week? Well, but that's a, the match was garbage. You had our current AEW World Heavyweight Champion at the time was named Dean Ambrose get completely squashed by Brock Lesnar. Yeah, he didn't want to work. You had you had AJ Styles and Chris Jericho, which should have been a great match, only get about twelve minutes and kind of not memorable at all. You had yeah, the first match was much better. You had Ryback and Kalisto on the pre-show before this. So, yes. <laughs> Not many memorable things. League of, New, League, League of Nations versus New Day. <laughs> you had The Rock bury the entire Wyatt, Wyatt family. What in that like, what was it, five seconds? Six seconds? <laughs> he, took, he took more time burning the letters in his name than he did squashing the Wyatt family. <laughs> That was WrestleMania 32 in a nutshell, or as people at the time, a lot of fans were calling it injury injury mania because John Cena, Seth Rollins, Randy Orton, like our good friend Junk Guy JJ said, they were all injured at the time. That's just the the first couple of names. Cesaro was also injured at the time. Cesaro was hurt. There was a few names injured at the time. So that WrestleMania is well deserving of being on our top five. But they had understandable circumstances in regards to that coming up at number four is one that didn't have the same circumstances it actually came in the most lucrative most successful time in wwe history and this is actually a wrestlemania that did well when it comes to numbers and profits because it was the attitude era but when you look at it you look back on it it's one of those times coming in at number four is wrestlemania 15 Tell us your memories of WrestleMania 15. You could start off with the positives this time. Uh, shit, ain't that many. But if you want to start off, we definitely start off with Rock and Austin. Like that was that was the first match in there. Well, not the first match they had together. But that was their first Mania match in their trilogy, which ironically was the worst one out of the three. It wasn't a bad match, but it definitely wasn't their top match. Um, watching Boss Man being hung at six years old was kind of creepy. But uh, I remember that vividly. Uh, what else happened? What else happened? I'm trying to be positive here. Um, <laughs> I, think, I think you're done named everything. <laughs> I think that was it. 
<laughs> the hard, the know, hardcore the fucking, title match, the opener. There we go. The you hardcore, know, was, hardcore opener. I think it was Billy was, Gunn, uh, Billy Gunn, uh, Hardcore Holly, and Al Snow. Al Snow, yep, exactly. And um, that was it. Boys to Men did the opening. Oh, no beautiful America, whatever the fuck it was. And did we, who did Sable fight for the title? Oh, she fought Tori. Green oh, horror. Oh. Man, that, that's on a pause. Oh. Never mind. I'm just that getting to see Sable. Awful. I'll go into yeah, more of the awful points of uh, WrestleMania 15. Yeah, you had that awful and one of the worst heel turns in history. Oh, Sable, who was trying to for every shitty mania. So hold I, on. I, I, did, I, did, I did some research on this mania, so it gets even worse. Sable, who was supposed to be selling Playboy covers, Playboy magazines, decided to they decided to turn her heel because. That's how you sell Playboy magazine, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> they didn't sell as many as when she was actually faced. She um, basically had a stalker in Tory as a fan, and the stalker was the baby face. Oh, and then they bring out the tra- this, oops, sorry. Didn't they bring out uh, what's the chick name? Nicole Bass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Nicole Bass was out there at the time as well. Oh man, uh, they the, did the all- original, the original Nyla Rose. Sorry. They, anyway, um... <laughs> they they did all this hot potato with the Intercontinental title, where the Intercontinental title was basically a custer fuck by the time they got to WrestleMania. You've already went over uh, Boss Man being hung in one of the worst matches of the Undertaker streak. Uh, oh, the seven match period. <laughs> you, had, you had Kane versus Triple H and probably Triple H's worst match of his WrestleMania career in a match that ended finish. in disqualification. Another positive from the show, X-Pac versus Shane McMahon for the European title was actually a positive. And Triple H turning heel to, turning to heel, join the corporation. His career. In retrospect, in hindsight, that was a positive, but that's about it when it comes to the positives. It's really the main event, Triple H turning heel, and the Xbox, Shane McMahon, everything else, you could throw it in the bin. It's all trash. It's a Get clusterfuck. It's a clusterfuck of a uh, pay per view, and it's not a surprise that six months later, head booker Vince Russo was out the door and off to WCW. But it's funny you say that too, because now thinking about it, like as because we're clearly all grown now. Yeah. How bad a lot of these attitude era reviews were. <laughs> it really, especially in '99. Like '99 oh was God. not a good year. It was not a good At year. Oh man, all the big four pay per views sucked that year. Mm-hmm. It sucked. SummerSlam, SummerSlam probably the best big four pay per view that yeah. year, and that SummerSlam wasn't even is, that good. SummerSlam was probably the best out of the big four, and is not even like top ten SummerSlam. Yeah. <laughs> <At all. laughs> So, coming in at number four, like we said, WrestleMania 15. Moving on to number three, we got WrestleMania 2. Coming from, WrestleMania. Three, lo- coming from three locations, from Los Angeles, from Chicago, and back home at New York City at Madison Square Garden. I know you... Before we even went went and started recording this, you said that during your research, you decided you couldn't even watch rewatch WrestleMania two. <laughs> so you have to you have to one part explain why it's so low and why it's not number one in the worst WrestleManias, and then you can more explain the negatives of the show. Uh, it fucking sucked. <laughs> um, what was the main event again? The what main was it, event Hogan and Bundy, right? Hogan versus King Kong Bundy inside of the Bundy. blue steel cage, which is the only Bundy. positive of that match. I was about to say that's steel. legit. The only reason I think that got, I tried to get through that show to watch that. Didn't they have a boxing match too? If I'm not mistaken. They had Mr. T versus Roddy Rock Piper, which is Sorry, probably probably would make our top ten worst matches in WrestleMania history. Oh, it would. It's definitely top five. Uh, it was just a bad show, man. The bad show. I haven't watched it in Lord knows how long, but god damn. I remember getting the WrestleMania anthologies, and of course, I wanted to watch every show. I think two, I could not get through. Two was like the only show I think I couldn't get through. It was so bad. I, I did enjoy um, the King Kong Bundy uh, Hulk Hogan match because Hogan I, I kind of expect Hulk Hogan's not, wasn't, was never a really great worker, but. I I more or less know what I'm supposed to expect out of a big man versus Hulk Hogan match, oh, and match. I got what I expected out of that match. And I really did enjoy the um, whole big celebrity 
um, Battle Royal with uh, William the Refrigerator. Right, right. Freddy. That was fun. Yep. It was just yep. fun. It was just really fun. It was like a precursor to like the gimmick <laughs> battle, royal, which is one of my favorite Battle Royals. Like, the precursor to like how them doing the Celebrity Wing for Hall of Fame. Like he was one of the guys that they promoted so high. Like at the time, I think he got inducted when they were in Chicago in oh oh six or twenty yeah. two. So that's yeah. what started and the I, whole celebrity wing crap. And I did enjoy the fact that Andre won. I like, I like, I like, I mean myself, like a lot of people, especially us as kids that grew up during this era, like the early days where we weren't really watching, but we kind of heard about it when we first were introduced as kids to that wrestling. Andre was always introduced to us as the heel that he was at WrestleMania 3, where I did enjoy going back and watching this, the fact that Andre was universally a babyface. So you kind of see the difference well respected. what he became a year later at WrestleMania 3, where he's the top babyface in the company. So that was kind of fun to go back and watch. But other than the Battle Royal, other than Hogan and Bundy, that's depending on your taste of Hogan matches, this show is complete trash. And the oh, only yeah. reason it's not higher on our list is the three locations does make it unique. At least you, it's unique and different than all the other WrestleManias. So, yes, we will have another and it plays into this year. Exactly. And it plays into this year. Because this yeah. year, our Mania has multiple locations rather than Raymond James Stadium, where I should be on Sunday. So, where we're going to have a drink be. for that. Where you should be. Mm. Oh, ah, man. I don't know how you do this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know either, man. I be, I get off these things, I'd be like, what the fuck was I thinking? We got to do this for the business that we love. Exactly. Fans, because we're wrestling players. And we love to give you these drunken lists and reviews. <laughs> so coming in at number three, that was WrestleMania number two. Segue into our number two on our worst WrestleManias list, WrestleMania 11. WrestleMania 11 came from the Harvard, uh, Hartford, Connecticut, in the Civic Center. Vince McMahon felt like this was WrestleMania coming to its home base. The positive of this WrestleMania, of course, Harper Kid Shawn Michaels was a single star. So, of course, he had the best match on the show. I think you can pretty much say from WrestleMania 9 to WrestleMania 14 when he retired, he had the best match on the show. From when he came back until he retired again, he probably had the first or second best match on that show as well. But on this show, he versus Diesel in the WWF Championship matchup. Uh, also, I felt like the LT versus Bam Bam Bigelow match was just fun. It was just fun, and the fact that LT was a lot better than he should have been for his first match as a professional football player. Like sure, he was coked up before the match. That's why. Well, then probably true. Probably true. I'm not gonna lie. But then this match, when I we watched this and did our research and we watched this, this match was a lot better than I remember. And that people give it me was a horrible for. match. It was not. It was not like Mr. T versus Roddy Roddy Piper at WrestleMania two is by far the worst celebrity <laughs> matchup at WrestleMania. This is like middle of the road. It's not as good as Mayweather versus Big Show, but it's definitely better. Shouldn't than have Mr. been the main event either, but you know, no, no. Now, Diesel and APK, I think we can agree, should have been the main event. But LT didn't feel out of pace. I love the entrance. I love the whole pre-match ceremony. Shout out to Salt Pepper. Salt What a man, what a man, what a man, man what a mighty good, good, good man. What a man, what a man, what a man, what a good man. What a man, what a man, what a man, what a mighty good man. I loved it. I loved it. That just made me, like those were the two best highlights from my WrestleMania. Top guy JJ, you're already sh uh, pouring your shot, so get into the the <laughs> negative of WrestleMania 11. Up uh, everything, the opener. Um, what was it the fucking the tag team match? Oh, oh Lawrence Taylor and Bam Bam Bigelow main eventing over Sean and Diesel, which was fucking crazy to me. Um. Damn, we had, had, had oh, it yeah, probably MJ, had, take your King Kong Bundy. <laughs> it probably God, had take your had a lot of shitty matches his early mania, man. But you know what's funny? People look so quick to talk about the streak, but you gotta realize the streak of terrible matches is also a real thing, too. I think his first good match at Mania probably was into what 17? I give, I, give, I give credit to 12 against Diesel. 12 against Diesel, uh, Diesel is, is serious. It's okay, but 
<laughs> I feel like it's the time accurate. you could tell he didn't care because you know he was on his way out. But this, even before that, the match before with Brett the Cage before WrestleMania, and then his match after with Sean were way better. Well, well yeah, your, yeah. Uh, I, but I, I still think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty good matchup, and it, I think, I think maybe that was a cool you're, build up, though. I, I, I think you're you're viewing it from when you watched it probably years ago. You should probably rewatch it, and I think we we will we can converse about this more after you rewatch it. <laughs> you rewatch it. It's a lot better than you probably remember. It's probably the first good match that he ever had at WrestleMania. But we agree, King Kong Bundy was trash. That match was trash. The whole premise of the match with them taking the urn was the only good part of the whole build-up to the match as well. But this WrestleMania That's really King Kong was with Million Dollar Corporation, right? Yep. I don't, I don't understand it. But amazingly, this this pay per view also had Bret Hart's only bad WrestleMania match in my eyes. Bret Hart, right. as he to back, this is the only <laughs> WrestleMania where he had a bad match, and it was against Bob Backlund. Bob Backlund, Backlund that he, he just had a good match against that Survivor, Survivor Series. Survivor Series. <laughs> They have a submission match. These guys are submission specialists, and they have a submission match, and it's trash. It's just trash. It's it's not as good as their, their Survivor Series 94 match. It's probably the oh. worst singles match that Bret Hart has at WrestleMania. Everything else on the card is absolutely forgettable, other than the fact that this is Lex Luger's last WrestleMania before. Yeah, Six yeah. months later, he jumps to WCW. He um, teamed with British Bulldog, correct? Yeah, he was uh, Allied Powers with uh, uh Powers, yep. I believe they versed uh Owen Hart and uh Yoko Zona. Yes. But yes, WrestleMania eleven, if you wanna rewatch it, it's the second worst WrestleMania of all time because even the two positives that we named before are just good. It's just solid. It just hits that bar of just about not just above bad. Like <laughs> it's okay. It's fine. So I'll yeah, just chug juice. I'm gonna take a shot for that one. Well deserving. I, I forgot to pour me a shot for WrestleMania 11 from the Civic Center, and it was at Harford Civic Center of all the great places that WrestleMania has been at. Even our number one is at a unique place, and I think our number one, the only thing that's good that's good about our number one is the theme and the places at this Basically. WrestleMania was from Harvard, Connecticut. Well deserving of the shot and his place as the number two pick. Being very precise with these shots because I have kids to take care of. Hopefully she says sleep all night because daddy's going to sleep after this. Oh, of course. And daddy's going to sleep. No, I'll probably have to feed him. But, yeah. <laughs> Any... Any honorable mentions, because we minimize this to a top five, so any honorable mentions before we get into our number one? Uh, for Bad Manias, honorable mentions, uh, 29, uh, I, 27. Oh, I was about to say that. 27, <laughs> because 27... <laughs> Has the worst, and like we won't do worse. We'll do. We're gonna do probably another like list for. Maybe I'll do it with Junk Guy JJ. Maybe I'll do it with somebody else. Where we're gonna do the top ten best matches in WrestleMania history. But twenty seven has the worst match in WrestleMania history. I don't think it's any debate. Michael Cole versus Jerry King Law. Worst <laughs> match <laughs> in WrestleMania history is at WrestleMania twenty seven. It's probably the worst. The worst main event build in history. Because pretty much from the beginning, all you guys were all they were doing was setting up Cena and Rock rather than Cena versus Miz, and Miz is the champion heading into the show. So how the fuck do you pretty much scrape past Miz, who's your champion, heading Damn, into his first main event? You you ah. done you done made me. I'm gonna have to pour a shot for even an honorable <laughs> mention. Like yo, that that like I'm I'm bad. We didn't put that in our top five. Like. <laughs> Like they not had no. Triple H Undertaker. Yeah, exactly. H Undertaker. I, honestly, Edge's last match. Well, not his last match, yeah. but Edge, at the Edge, time, Edge. his last match. No, but Edge in Del Rio is actually. I would say, like, I had to redo. We'll do, we're also going to do a list for the top ten best opening matches in WrestleMania history, and I had to rewatch it, and I feel like Edge versus Alberto Del Rio is in that like top ten, top fifteen type of list when it comes to. Yeah. The so right. mania, yeah, mania started off good. It had had Edge Del Rio. We had Cody and Ray. Oh man, don't die on me, Sid. 
Mm. <laughs> we had Cody and Ray. We had in a row. Punk. In a short time. I don't know, man. I just, I just keep, I just keep going, you know. I just, and then we had Cody and Orton. I mean, Cody and Orton, Orton and Punk, and then after that, it just went. Then it picked up a little bit with Taker and uh, Triple H, and went batshit back. <laughs> and, 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 and Taker and Triple H deserve extra credit because they came directly after the worst match in WrestleMania history. Yeah. <laughs> I just you know, always have great watching that match now. Only because their Triple H Undertaker themes are both dubbed, so I can't even. Wa- I don't even want to watch the match. I don't even watch the match anymore just because of that. Like I hate hearing freaking dub music when wrestling, man. It's a fucking worse. I take a shot for that too. Like, how did you play Metallica? How the fuck did you play Johnny Cash? You play some stupid WWE production bull. What man? Fuck this. Yo, that Johnny Cash uh, build up and the songs for that build up. Yeah, ain't no grave. I built that shit up for two months and you don't even. That means the whole build. We not release it. You don't even show. Like it doesn't make sense. That, oh, that, that that made the whole build up. I think I am gonna do probably our one of our top ten, either the top ten best matches in WrestleMania history or top ten openers. We can still drink if you want. I'll probably do it with Junk Guy JJ. One or the other. We'll do that <laughs> together. So finishing up our top five worst radios in history. Number one. From Ropey. Tell him, Sid. WrestleMania 9 from Las Vegas, Nevada. It's a whole Caesars Palace theme. The best part of this WrestleMania (laughs) is the fact that it's in Las Vegas. The fact that Macho Man comes out with the toga, a whole big entrance. You got Bobby the Brain Heenan riding a camel to the ring backwards (laughs) wearing a toga. You had Jim Ross in his first telecast as a WWE commentator wearing a toga backstage I heard this on something to wrestle with with Bruce Richard backstage this man says you look good in a toga the first word (laughs) that he heard before he went in front of the camera for the first time as a WWE commentator. That's what this man said to Jim Ross. That's the first best thing about WrestleMania 9. Second, uh, second best thing, I'll say as a part A, part B, is the second best thing. The opener and the and the, the actual main event, not the extra that we got, the actual the main event had. Was, was pretty solid to good. I say the Tatanka HBK match was good. It just had a shit finish with the countdown finish to oh, end that okay. match. And it was more about the yeah. managers on the outside. And then the the main event was also pretty solid up until the finish when when they had the Asian stereotype yeah. of throwing salt yeah, into the, hardest. They had an Asian man throw salt into a Canadian man's eyes. So <laughs> JJ, drunk out JJ, I'll let you finish this up and talk about the negatives from WrestleMania. Negatives? What? I've been here all night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Take a giant Gonzalez. I don't even have to say anything about that match. You can just look at it yourself and you already know. <laughs> We said, we said, Kate Cobb Bundy and another match. We said it's one of the worst. We said Big Boss Man at 15 was one of the. We named two of the one of two of the worst matches in. This in, is the worst. In, yeah, this is the worst in the fact that the Undertaker won by disqualification. Why? Because a chloroform claw. <laughs> You know what? I honestly think Vince was probably booking this show on the fly. Oh, God, this is looking bad. Put chloroform on him. Oh, God, I don't like the reaction with Brett and Yokozuna. Let's, let's just bring Hogan out. Let's get him out there. Come on. Like, I honestly think he booked this show on the fly. Oh, I don't like how this match is too good. Let's, let's have a shit finish for the opener. I honestly think that's what his... And this is when, um, when what's the name debuted also, right? Uh, Lex Luger with the uh, Narcissus. Yes, yes. Make yes. the limit. Yeah. Oh, what a bad show. What a bad fucking show. What a bad fucking show. I, 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 I only other positive I can think of off the top of my head, because I just recently did my research and rewatched it, is the doink, the double doink spot. The double doink oh, spot did. against right. Crush. Only other positive about this show, and even that match was not that good, but the double doink spot was fun. So, yes. I don't know how this man does this. This you you guys you guys should definitely go out your way 
Watch all eight episodes of Going Raw with Drunk Guy JJ. He deserves all your views, all your likes. He deserves you subscribing because you watch Going Raw with Drunk Guy JJ. Because this man drinks a shot for every bad segment of Monday Night Raw. And he's making me drink a shot for every bad WrestleMania that we have made so far. You know what? Honestly, I would, you don't even have to take for this one. Well, you, well, honestly, you can take a shot for every match after the opener. But we can just do for Taker, Gonzalez, and fucking... Oh, um, my God. That's the worst. Hogan. That's the worst. Yeah. It's, and it's so funny because that whole setup, that whole venue, like how they had it presented was so amazing. Like, I would look at it just for production-wise. But with the quality of, the quality of it... It's a horrible, horrible WrestleMania. Horrible WrestleMania. I, it's I just, crazy. I'm trying to think of all the stuff that I'm trying to think of other shit that happened to that show, and I can't. You had you had the Steiners, so the Steiners versus the Head Shrinkers. Uh, yeah. which, it would be probably remembered as an okay match on this card, but the overall, like, just just it's just a really bad WrestleMania in a really bad time in the company. Um, they were right on the cuffs of the whole steroid scandal. They were trying to put... You know? <laughs> exactly. There's, there's a lot of bad things. And why did they put the title that. back on the guy who was the big part of the steroid scandal in Hulk Hogan? <laughs> the guy that, that a year later testified against you. Oh, against me. Oh, my God. <laughs> It's just and really. And he didn't defend the title. Remember, he wins the belt. He doesn't defend the title until he has to lose to Yokozuna, right? I can't. And that so, match is worse. worse. That, that, match, match, that, that, that match, match is worse than the nine seconds at WrestleMania. Oh, that match, my I God. watched nine, the 93 King of the Ring, and he literally lost because Harvey Whippleman dressed up as a photographer and blew up a camera <laughs> and in his face. Flashed the fucking face. Oh, my. Yeah. <sighs> I'm, 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 I'm hoping, no wonder, I'm no wonder why he doesn't like fucking Hogan. I don't blame him. I'm hoping that we can get a thumbnail where one of us have a face palm because, <laughs> because this is like just reminiscing on WrestleMania. <laughs> just reminiscing on reminiscing Re- WrestleMania Nine. It's just very difficult to do. But yes, that is number one, the worst. WrestleMania in history. I hope that our description of these WrestleManias kind of explain why these are the worst WrestleManias in history. But if you have a subscription to the WWE Network, you can become a free subscriber today and get W get WrestleMania 36 for free. And free, re- exactly. Corona, Corona is saving you guys. Corona is giving you good product for free right now. That's the only upside of this Corona shit. So, so take advantage of Corona. Take advantage of Corona, man. Take, it, take advantage. Listen to this, man. This man sacrificed his liver for every single video that he does for you right here on the True Hill Heat YouTube channel. So before we wrap things up, Drunk Guy JJ, anything that you want to plug, social media, anything that these fine people can go see you at? Oh, as always, you know, Instagram, Hacksaw underscore J, J J-A-Y if you can't spell, underscore Duggan, D-U-G-G-A-N if you can't spell that either. On the Twitter, as I always say, like the great Jericho says, D A T K I D S T Y S T Y S T Y L E S. That kid, Jay Styles. And on, and on Facebook, I kind of want you guys to follow me on Facebook or be my friends. Have enough. So I guess if you want to look it up, Jaquan James, you can find it. I'm not going to tell you which one it is because I'm sure there's another Jaquan James in the world. And of course, follow True Hill Heat. We, we can to keep giving you this product, the product that you guys love, the good product that we keep delivering every single week for multiple platforms because we're so good on instagram you can follow true hill heat twitter true hill heat facebook true hill heat youtube true hill heat like we're everywhere we are we are we are we are wrestling fans speaking for you the wrestling fans that watch us we are just extensions of you and we bring out the same matches that the same message that you guys are basically spoken about on all these social medias. You can follow me at True Hill underscore Epic SP3. Like he said, you can follow us on all social media at True Hill Heat. Like this video, uh, comment down below, and give us if we missed any 
of the worst WrestleManias. WrestleMania 5 is another bad one. Uh, oh. I don't know if a lot of you can rewatch WrestleMania 1. It's where it all begins, but it's very hard to rewatch. If you feel that we missed... <laughs> where it's any, all forgotten. <laughs> if you feel that we missed any of the worst WrestleManias in history, comment down below, push the subscribe button, and push the bell to stay notified for all the great content right here on True Hill Heat. It is me, it is me, your True Hill Phenom SP3. We have the great and extraordinary, not an extraordinary man, drunk guy JJ. He's here for a good time, not a long time. Comment down below, no the subscribe button. We are signing off for, but in the meantime, like, share, and subscribe for more True Hill Heat. Signing off until next time.